Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem sentence similarity three. I don't think we've solved either of the first two ones, but I don't think this problem is too bad. I mean, conceptually, at least the solution is relatively simple. I think you're going to be able to understand it, but it's probably not simple to actually arrive at that solution. So that's what I'm going to try to help you with today. So suppose we're given a couple strings like this. Let's say this is S1 and this is S2. The idea is that we want to be able to transform one of the strings into the other string. The only thing that we're allowed to do is pick a substring and insert it into the other string. So we could clearly take that and insert it at the beginning or at the end or somewhere in the middle. The strings that we're given are sentences that are formed by words that are separated by spaces. So the way we're going to code this up is just by taking each of these strings and splitting it into an array of individual strings. Each of those is going to be one of the words in the string. Now, we don't actually have to do the string conversion. We don't actually have to make this one look like that. We just have to determine if it is possible for us to insert a substring into one of the strings to make it look like the other one. That's the only thing we're allowed to do, just insert a single substring. Given that, it's not difficult to determine that if we're given two strings, we only are allowed to essentially modify the smaller string, because why would we ever want to modify the larger string? No matter what you insert into this one, it's never going to look like the smaller string. It's not really possible by increasing this string that it could look like the other one. Now, imagine the edge case where both of the strings are of equal length. Well, in that case, we can't really insert into either of them. We just have to hope that both of the strings are equal because we're only allowed to insert into one string, not both of them. So like if this string was, hey, John, theoretically, you might think, well, I could insert a Jane over here and insert a John over there, but that's not allowed, of course. So what I'm getting at is that the problem says we're allowed to modify one of the strings. I'm going to just tell you straight up, just get the length of both strings and always pick S1 to be the smaller string. If they're equal in length, then it doesn't really matter how you assign them. But the smaller string should always be S1 just to make our solution simple. So now we know that we're only allowed to insert into this string and this is the longer string. That much is established. So at this point, what I actually tried, and it didn't completely work, was something like this. Have a pointer in the smaller string. We're trying to find a match for every single word here. But there is a catch. It's not just a simple subsequence match. We're not just going to be checking if this string is a subsequence of the other one, because let me show you why that could be a problem. Imagine I took the longer string and just added another word at the end. I'm just going to do Bob. It doesn't really matter. But suppose we are just doing a simple subsequence match. For every word here, we want to find a matching word here. We look at these two words. We start with like a two-pointer approach. Okay, they match. So shift both of the pointers. Now we want to look for a matching word here. We see this one. It's my doesn't match. So skip it. This one also doesn't match. Skip it. This one also doesn't match. Skip it. Here we get to Jane. So we found two of the matching words and then we'll uh, shift this pointer over here. And so we found a match for every word here. But does that indicate that the solution here is true? Is it actually possible, given our constraints, for us to transform this string into the other? All of the words that we skipped or I guess you could say the substring that we would want to insert here. But there's also a word at the end of the other string. So if we wanted it to match, we'd have to insert this at the end as well. That's clearly the problem. We're not allowed to insert two separate strings. We're only allowed to insert one string. So while you can't do just a simple like subsequence match, this might make you think that you're getting close to the solution. And it kind of is close to the solution. But the catch here is that you can't only look for a single spot because the concept of like matching words, there could be multiple occurrences of the word hello that this could match to. For example, if I change this example one more time, suppose I get rid of, let's say, is and I replace it with a hello. So now if I try to run sort of the same like subsequence matching, I will find a match here for hello. And then looking for Jane, I'll end up skipping this, this, and this, and then wait until I get here. Okay, now that I think about it, I should actually pick a different example for what I'm about to illustrate. 
because uh, this algorithm actually would return true, which is the correct answer in this example. So let me change it up a tiny bit. Okay, so I just added a bunch of random words to each of these strings to get this point across. So if I start here, found a match, hello. Now I'm looking for good. Okay, I found a match here. I had to skip this one. And now I'm looking for this word. So I have to skip this, this, and this. So right now we had to skip this section and this section. So that's two sections. Therefore, this algorithm would return false. But the solution actually does exist. We could have actually matched this hello with this one. And if that were the case, then this would match here. And then we could just take this string and insert it into the beginning, unlike before, where we kind of matched this with that and then these with that, or rather actually it was like this. And in that case, we'd have this section and this section to insert. So we can avoid this actually by going back to the problem statement for a second and just kind of seeing how we can simplify things. Remember what I kind of mentioned at the beginning? We're allowed to insert a string either at the beginning, the end, or the middle, any substring. Now, of course, that substring will probably come from the second string, but that's the idea here. So if we want both of these to match each other, then there's only three possibilities where that will actually be true given our constraints. I know I kind of butchered this word. There's only going to be three cases where we're going to end up returning true. These are the three cases. Either this entire string is going to be a prefix of the second string. If that's the case, obviously all of these other words can just be appended and then the strings are equal. So that's one case. The second case is where this entire string is a suffix of the other string. Then we can just do the opposite, take these and add them to the beginning. So these are the first two cases. They're both very simple. What can you imagine that the other case is going to be? Well, this could be a combination of a prefix and a suffix. So here we could have hello, here we have good Jane. And so this middle string is what we would end up inserting in the middle. It's just one single contiguous substring because we have a prefix and a suffix. There cannot be any skips in the suffix or the prefix. So now that you know this, there's only three cases. How do we go about solving the problem? Well, this sort of implies that if we wanted to, theoretically, we could skip some words from the beginning. Now, if we did that, we cannot skip words from the end. Vice versa, we could skip words from the end, but then we can't from the beginning. Now, checking like if this whole thing is a prefix or if it's a suffix, both of those like case one and case two, those are very easy to check. And the way I'm going to code this up right now, I'm going to mainly focus on explaining case three. And these two can actually be combined into case three when we code it up. So everything works out. But in any case, this is what I'm going to focus on explaining because that's going to be the difficult part where this is a combination of a prefix and a suffix. This is kind of how the algorithm is going to go. It's nothing crazy. It's going to be similar to what we had before. We're looking for this word. So we start at the beginning and either this word matches or it doesn't. If it matches, that's great because we're looking for a prefix right now anyway, a combination of prefix and suffix. So if it works, that's great. Now, if it doesn't work, well, I'm not just going to skip this and then try the next one because the fact that this character does not match this one, this word, sorry, does not match this one. We already know we're in case three right now anyway. The only possible solution we're going to have is where this entire thing matches up with this. Because even if we found a match for hello and like assume like the other word wasn't there, Unless this is connected to a suffix, then we're going to have two disjoint sections that we have to kind of insert back into the first string. Therefore, the solution doesn't work. So what we're going to do is just match the beginning. We found one word match, and then we're going to go to the second word. We do not find a match. So now we stop. This was the longest matching prefix that we could find. Now let's start from the other side and find the longest matching suffix. We look at these two words. They're the same. So now do the same thing, except go in the other direction. Look at this word. They're both the same. Go back and then look at this word and they're both the same. Now, at this point, we're kind of done anyway. Like when we saw that this word was a match, we didn't really need to keep going. But now you can kind of see why this algorithm, the one that finds the combination of prefix and suffix, also works when the entire string matches a suffix or it matches a prefix because the algorithm will find that match, this match here. 
with this one. The reason we knew that we were done is let's say we have a pointer. Let's say we call this the left pointer and we call this the right pointer. Um, since this is string one, I might call these left one and right one. And here I might say left two and right two. By the time I got to this point where right one was here and then this is a match. So I'm going to decrement it one more time. I'm here. And by the way, when L1 was finished, this was the last word that it matched. So it actually left off over here. And so since the pointers have crossed each other, that's how you know that we're done. So that's the whole idea behind this problem. It's a two pointer approach, which is pretty interesting related to prefixes and suffixes. But time complexity is just going to be the size of both strings. Let's say that's N plus M. Same for the space complexity since we're gonna split them into a list of words. So I'm gonna start by just splitting both of the strings. You probably know how to do that, but if you don't, this is how you can do it. Take both of the parameters, at least in Python, you can split using this as the delimiter, just making sure that's one space. It kind of looks like two. Anyways, I just want to make things simple for myself. So I want S1 to always be the smaller string. So this is what I'm gonna do. If the length of S2 is actually smaller than the length of S1, then I'm gonna swap them. Python makes it very easy to do that. You don't need a temporary variable. Just do this. This will execute in a single statement, or at the very least, this right side will evaluate first and then the left side. So pretty much like what I said. And then we want to do that two pointer approach I was talking about. And we're only going to focus on case three because the other two cases are actually handled by the third uh, case. Mainly, this all centers around the fact that S1 should be a prefix, suffix, or combination of both of S2. So we're going to have two pointers, L1, L2, to be at the beginning of S1 and S2, respectively. And I'm going to say, while both of the pointers are in bounds, while this is less than that and L2 is less than that, I want to increment the two pointers, but I only want to do that if they're equal. So to the condition, I'm also going to add that S1 of L1 is equal to S2 of L2. And then we can increment the pointer. So we can say L1 and L2 are just going to be added together. So like that, not added together, incremented. So this will basically find the longest matching prefix of both of them. So either L1 is going to basically be at the end of the first sentence, or it'll stop somewhere in the middle, in which case we can pick up where we left off with the right pointers going in the other direction. So R1, R2 is equal to length of S1 minus one and length of S2 minus two. And we'll mainly just do the same thing, like while R1 is in bounds, while it's greater than or equal to zero and R2 is in bounds and the words are equal. Sorry, at this point, my brain is just kind of on autopilot. Just make sure you got your variable names correct. And then we're going to shift the right pointers in the opposite direction. So they're going to be decremented, R1, R2, decremented. Now, what exactly do we return at the end? Well, remember, if the pointers crossed each other, then we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So we can say that if the pointers in the first sentence, if L1 left pointer, which should be to the left of the right pointer, if it becomes greater than the right pointer, then they crossed. And that's when we would return true. Otherwise, we would return false. Now, even if we ignore the combination case, imagine if they have a prefix from S1, like the entire string S1 is a prefix of the second sentence. Well, then by default, L1 will be greater than R1, even if the initial value of R1 never changes. And the opposite is also true. If this loop never executes, but the entire string S1 is a suffix of the other string, then this will end up being negative one. So this will still be true. I'll quickly run it to prove it. And of course I had a typo two over here. Not sure why, probably got the names confused. I'll change that to a one. And while you can see that this solution does work and it is very efficient, there are a couple code changes that we can make just to clean it up a tiny bit. Here you can see that both of the pointers start at zero. Each of the pointers is incremented by one. So we actually don't need two pointers. We could actually just have a single pointer for the left and then just increment that one. And if you're worried about the condition, like, well, what if the strings are of different length? Actually, S1 is always shorter anyways, so it doesn't matter. We can actually just change it to this. And then here, make sure to change that to an L1 as well. So that can be shortened a tiny bit. And here, we can actually terminate this loop a little bit early. If R1 gets out of bounds, or if R1 crosses the left pointer, at that point, we can stop this loop and just return true anyway. So here I'm going to say while this is actually greater than or equal to the left pointer. 
Now, if it's smaller than the left pointer, that's when we stop. So this will also work and it's a tiny bit better. So I'll just run this. And here you can see it works. And for whatever reason, the runtime is like the opposite this time. Again, that just shows you that these runtimes are really random. So I wouldn't waste your time with them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.